Hi, this is Randy Zajac, Technical Advisor at Gujon Brothers Incorporated. Today we're going to take a brief look at the vacuum bag process while laying up a fiberglass canoe hull. Before we get started, here's a quick look at the elements used in this particular layout. Mold release, gel coat, fiberglass, keel ply, breather fabric, vacuum bag sealant, and vacuum bag film. To wet out the fiberglass, we used West System 105 resin mixed with 206 hardener. The gel coat was a mixture of West System 105 resin and 205 hardener thickened with 406 filler. Here we are cutting our vacuum bag film to length. Ideally, the film is about 20% larger than the mold to allow enough room for contours without bridging. To start, we found the center of the film and stuck it down to the center of the mold with the vacuum sealant tape. We worked the film from the center out, making pleats in the bag every few inches. The number and size of pleats is determined by the complexity of the part's shape. The vacuum bag film at the ends of the mold was sealed to itself and then to the mold. Once the bag is completely sealed to the mold, we mark the position for the vacuum cup and cut a piece of the film away for air to travel through. We put vacuum sealant tape on the suction cup so it will stay sealed if vacuum was lost for a short time. Suction cup placement depends on part geometry. Typically you don't want to put it on what will become the finished part, but off to the side. It was not an issue for our canoe here. A trap is put in line with the vacuum tubing to catch any excess resin before it goes into the pump. The air is evacuated from under the bag and a vacuum is generated. As the bag is evacuated, it is important to position it to avoid bridging in any tighter spots. If you have any leaks, fix them with vacuum sealant tape. Once the part is under vacuum, don't remove the bag until the part cures. After the part is cured, remove the vacuum bag, breather fabric, and peel ply and pull it from the mold. 